If you are showing up and producing content online, whether that's a blog, a YouTube video, whatever it is, you're trying to add value, but you're just not seeing the traction, or worst of all, nothing positive is happening to your bank account, then you've probably got a content problem. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down for you my top five reasons why your content is not adding to your bottom line. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I own Gap Consulting, where we help you to get organized and automated with no-code tools. But this video is being brought to you from my second brand, Built to Scale. At Built to Scale, we are all about helping you learn how you can use your skills and become a no-code consultant online. And I wanna help you make your first thousand dollars online if you've not done this before, or if you just need a refresher and head back to the basics. Check out my five day crash course. This crash course is gonna give you the basic building blocks of getting started as a no-code consultant. We're gonna help you identify your niche market and learn where you can appeal to them and start getting clients online today. If that's of interest, grab that training at built2scale.io. That's the number two. I'll include links below this video. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of things and before we get into the actual five reasons that your content is probably failing you, I wanna start by saying you might hear some tough love in this video, but I don't want you to take this as discouragement. I am not here to discourage you and break you down and tell you you don't belong in this space. If you feel like you want to be here, if you want to be earning money online by producing content like this, then I want to encourage you and lift you up. And I want to come at you with a brotherly love perspective and say, hey, hold on, don't make the mistakes that I made. So learn from the mistakes that I've put out in the world before, and that's what I'm bringing you today. So if you hear some stuff that rubs you the wrong way, know that it comes from a place of genuinely trying to help you move forward so that you don't get stuck like I did in my early days. So let's start at the bottom of my list, the number five reason that I see most people's content flailing and just not producing results is kind of an obvious one. In fact, all of these are obvious. You're just not passionate about what you're talking about. So let me just back up real quick. If you don't have passion for the things that you're going out into the world and sharing, that is going to come across in your videos. I am insanely passionate about helping people reach their own financial goals and become their own no-code consultants, become their own boss. In fact, I just told you how passionate about that thing I was and the truth is your passion is going to come through in your videos. Whether you like it or not, if you don't care about a topic that you're discussing, it's gonna show. So if I were to sit down and walk you through what I eat on a weekly basis and why I do that and what I'm putting in my body, you'd probably be bored to tears. And frankly, I wouldn't blame you. I'm just not super passionate about it. I see that it's important, but it doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night, have me thinking like, I gotta talk about this. So if you don't have a passion for the stuff that you're putting out in the world, it's gonna come through. And that's the number five reason that your audience might just not resonate with what you're putting out there because you just don't have the energy when you talk about it. Now we're working our way up the list here. The number four reason that your content just might not be getting you those results is that you're not producing on a consistent schedule. This is an absolute must for all content that is put out in the world. You have to, have to, have to. Do it on a consistent schedule. Now, at a minimum, my recommendation is that you put out content once a week when you're getting started. Once a week is a pretty low cadence that most people can commit to. Now, you'll probably have to put in a number of hours to produce any piece of content. That even goes for a 10 minute video like this, where you're putting in the recording time, the editing time, the production time, all of the different pieces that go into making your content. It all adds up and you're gonna put in hours per piece of content. You can probably realistically commit to one piece of content a week in the early days. Now, the reason that consistency is so darned important is because your audience is going to start to rely on your production and whatever cadence you establish. So if you tell me that my favorite podcast comes out every Thursday at 10 a.m. and I start putting that in my calendar, well then I'm gonna show up on Thursday at 10 a.m ready to listen. 
But if for some reason it stops showing up on time, I'm going to start to lose interest. I'm going to forget that, hey, that podcast shows up at 10 a.m. and I'm going to stop showing up every time it pops up in my calendar. So the truth is you have got to really set your cadence from the beginning and just be consistent about showing up and producing that content. This was my number one North Star metric when I started building Gap Consulting. The absolute thing that had to happen every week was a new piece of content had to be ready to go Monday morning. This was everything, even if it meant that I had to stay up and pull an all-nighter in order to get that content out. Now, the number three reason as we keep our way up the list is that you don't consistently convert your content consumers into customers. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can convert your viewers, your consumers into customers, but the easiest way is to just put together a really nice call to action so that folks who are consuming your content can take the next step with you. And I'll draw your attention back to the very beginning of this video where I said, hey, if you haven't started this yet, I want to help you make your first thousand bucks online. Sign up at builttoscale.io. The whole reason for that is the whole reason for creating this content to begin with. Number one, I want to put good work out into the world and help people move up. But the other thing is, I want you to take the next step with me. I want to get your email address and in order to make that trade in order to convince you that it's worth giving, I need to offer you something that you want. And helping you make your first thousand bucks online is really aligned with this video. So make sure that you create a call to action for the pieces of content that you create, but also that call to action has to align with the thing that you're talking about. It wouldn't make sense for me to come on to this video and say, hey, check out my Airtable crash course. I'm not talking about Airtable exclusively in this video, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to bring that particular call to action in. So the big takeaway is to find a way to convert your viewers or your content consumers into paid clients. In order to do that, the easiest way is to build your call to action, which will allow you to provide additional value in exchange for an email address. And then once you have that email address, you need to find a way to engage with people on a deeper level. Maybe that is by sending consistent emails about new pieces of content you've created, selling things like your courses, or promoting various services that you might offer. But without a way to convert people onto that email list so that you can take next steps with them in a better setting, then you're never going to see the results that you could see. Now, this is very, very obvious if you look at some of the bigger YouTubers out there that have amassed huge audiences, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people in some cases but they don't sell anything directly to those people. And so they're missing out on a ton of revenue. And as a further point here, it's how we've been able to take this channel, which has barely over 20,000 subscribers and grow a million dollar a year business from it. It's all from the fact that we are converting viewers into paid customers. Now working our way up the list, this is very similar to the next one, number two. It's all about the fact that you can't rely on ad revenue alone to grow a business. If you are looking at just producing ad revenue, there's a good chance that you're going to just give up before you get anywhere useful. Just as a way of putting some numbers to this so that we can add perspective. This channel, as I said, currently has just over 20,000 subs. I think it's about 23,000. And we do on average between $1,500 and $2,000 a month in YouTube ads. If that was the only thing that was driving my business, I would have given up months and months ago, years ago. I would have never made it to this point. You have got to put something more together than just saying, I'm going to get money off of YouTube ads. Now, the reason for this is if you want to make money off of ads, it's a volume game and getting new subscribers in the early days of building a channel is incredibly difficult. You have got to start to gain momentum and the first thousand subscribers to get to your channel feels like this uncontrollable slog that you're just never going to get through. The first thousand, it's just so hard to get every new subscriber because nobody wants to be the person who subscribes to the brand new YouTube channel. So the key takeaway here is if you've got a way to make money in the early days when your content is still getting relatively low traction, that's great. We were making $10,000 a month plus on less than a thousand subscribers. I know you can too. 
You can't count on ad revenue to get you there. You've got to be selling something else. So again, tying back to our previous point, find a way to convert your viewers into customers, but you got to have something to sell to them other than just ads. Now this takes us to the last point, the number one reason that your channel, your content is not driving the results for you. Now this is the tough one. Your audience probably doesn't have the money. There's a really good chance that you're creating content for an audience that while you might be passionate about it, you might even have a service based around it. If your audience doesn't have the money to spend, it doesn't matter. None of the other pieces matter if your audience is for all intents and purposes broke or doesn't think that it's worth paying you for the thing that you help with. So let me give you an example here. Imagine that you had the choice between building content around uh, designer clothes for 15 year olds or becoming a no code consultant and helping businesses grow and scale. Which one do you think has an audience that is more than willing to spend more money with you to help get the results you promise? No offense, but most 15 year olds don't have deep bank accounts and really shouldn't be wearing designer clothes anyway, because when I was 15, my clothes were not lasting more than six months at a time anyway. So it would make very little sense for my parents to pay money to get me in designer clothes. It would make even less sense if you were marketing directly to me and trying to get me to buy designer clothes because I had zero dollars in zero bank accounts at that age. So you get the idea. Now compare that to the business owner who generally makes multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars per year and is more than willing to invest in their business to have it grow and succeed. So obviously from these two choices, you're going to make much more money more quickly by appealing to the audience that has the money to pay you. Now, as I said in the beginning, I recognize that this is tough love and I'm not trying to suggest that you don't belong in this space. If you have identified any of these problems here and said, oh man, that's me, or maybe more than one of them, take note of what those things are. And I'm not saying abandon your work. I'm saying make small tweaks because if you feel driven to be in this space, if you feel like you've got what it takes, then the best thing you can do is keep moving forward. And as I said, learn from the mistakes I made so that you don't have to repeat them. I hope you got a ton of value out of this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, especially if you're interested in no code consulting. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. If you're ready to break into no code consulting, I welcome you to join me for my five day challenge available on our website at built to scale.io. You can sign up for that challenge by putting in your name and email address. And once you're all set there, you'll be taken right to the first lesson. This five day challenge is going to help you make your first thousand dollars online as a consultant so that you can start helping other people with no code. If that's of interest, be sure to swing on by and I'll see you in the next video.